Kings Island is a legendary park just dripping with history over its last 50 years. If you don't believe me, check out this documentary. I heard it's pretty good. Over those 50 years, they've seen 22 coasters come and go. Wood, steel, eight feet, 300 feet. And today, I wanna to give everyone its due and rank them up. I didn't get to ride all of these, but for those I'm missing, I've ridden comparable coasters. And otherwise, I did what I could. These are the coasters of Kings Island, ranked from worst to best. Number 22, Flying Ace Aerial Chase, a Vacoma Hang and Bang, opened in 2001. Kings Island only has a few bad coasters in their history, and this is one of them, and the one with the least redeemable qualities. You can blame Paramount for this one. They installed it in 2001 as Rugrats Runaway Reptar, changing names in 2010 when Nickelodeon Universe became Planet Snoopy. It's 48.6 feet tall, maxes out at 26 miles per hour, and covers 1,122 feet of track. But as I said, this is a Vacoma Hang and Bang. Your ears play pinball with the restraint every time it turns. And I think if Kings Island wants to keep this around, they should give it new trains with just a lap bar. Everyone would appreciate it. Number 21, Great Pumpkin Coaster, an ENF Myler Kitty Coaster, opened in 1992. Before Carl Lindner sold the park to Paramount, he had one last contribution and it was the park's smallest coaster ever. Standing just eight feet tall and covering less than 200 feet of track, this opened as Scooby Zoom, changed to Top Cat's Taxi Jam in 1998, then had one more name from 2006 to 2009, Little Bill's Giggle Coaster, based on a Nickelodeon series created by Bill Cosby. Just like Flying Ace, this got a Peanuts theme in 2010 to fit in with Planet Snoopy. Number 20, Scooby's Ghoster Coaster, a Carapro family suspended coaster, opened in 1998, closed in 2005. I never got to ride this, but it was a very mild coaster popping out at eight miles per hour and using an elevator lift to get up to 35 feet. These just had single car trains. Basically, you ride alone, or more likely, you ride with your kid. Like most of these car pro suspended coasters, this lasted a few years and was taken out. It had a halfway decent run for eight seasons. Then it was put into storage and lost to history. Number 19, King Cobra, a Togo stand-up, opened in 1984, closed in 2001. This was a groundbreaking coaster for its time. It was the first ever to be built as a stand-up coaster. Riders would stand upright with an over-the-shoulder restraint and a so-called lap bar. It lifted its riders up 95 feet, maxing out at 50 miles per hour, 2,219 feet of track, and one inversion, a vertical loop. The rest of the layout has airtime hills and a helix. I never rode this one, but I did ride Shockwave at King's Dominion and I was not a big fan. There's a reason almost all of these are gone now, and you won't find anything from Togo in America these days outside of Las Vegas. This ran its course after 18 seasons, and some of its plot was used for Delirium, the rest of it later used for Banshee's first drop. Number 18, Son of Beast, an RCCA wooden coaster, opened in 2000, closed in 2009. I'm sure this ride had its fans. I was not one of them. It's the only wooden coaster to stand over 200 feet tall, one of two to cover over 7,000 feet of track, and it was the first modern inverting wooden coaster. I admit, it was very intense, and I give it that but I thought it was otherwise kind of boring and very rough. After that 214 foot drop, maxing out at 78.4 miles per hour, it would go into two large swooping helices and that famous loop. If you're like me and like a smooth wooden coaster with airtime, this was everything but that. This ride was nothing but trouble from the start. It had a major track malfunction in 2006, had its trains replaced and loop removed for 2007, and another injury report in 2009 seemed to be the final straw as it shut down and never reopened being officially torn down in 2012, making way for Banshee. This would only use a small sliver of the land, so all that area out in the woods remains unused to this day. Number 17, Woodstock Express, a PTC wooden family coaster, opened in 1972. From the tallest wooden coaster to one of the smallest, I have this one ranked higher and here's why. Son of Beast tried to do a thing and it sucked at it. Now, Woodstock Express tried to do a thing and it's great at it. It's supposed to be a wooden coaster that the whole family can enjoy, and it's perfect for it. 38.6 feet tall, 35 miles per hour, 1,350 feet of track. It's a perfect intermediate coaster. It's also a park original, opening as Scooby-Doo, changing to Beastie in 1980 following the opening of the Beast. And it kept that name until it got its Nickelodeon theme in 2006, Fairly Odd Coaster. In 2010, it got its Peanuts theme along with all the other kids' coasters. Number 16, 
Adventure Express, an aero mine train, opened in 1991. Most parks that opened in the 60s and 70s had an aero mine train from the start. Kings Island didn't, and it took them 19 years to add one. Because of this, they got a pretty good one. 63 feet tall, 35 miles per hour, almost 3,000 feet of track, and its station is on a hill, so it starts off with a bang. It has a lift chain in the middle, and one at the very end to bring it back up to the top of the hill. This one is full of animatronic drummers, building up the anticipation before the train dips back into the station. Hardly any of this ride is visible from the park, and unlike other older mine trains, this is pretty fast-paced. Number 15. Backlot Stunt Coaster, a premier rides launch coaster, opened in 2005. Paramount mass-produced this coaster in the mid-2000s for three of their parks, originally named Italian Job Stunt Track, and simulating scenes from the 2003 Italian Job movie as you launch through 1,960 feet of track in trains that look like Mini Coopers. It starts with a launch from 0 to 40 miles per hour in 3 seconds, winds up a very intense helix before dipping down and winding around some theming, stopping to be shot by a helicopter. There is a fire effect and then it enters an indoor section of the ride, bursting out of the signature element, the giant billboard, before turning back into the station. It's a short ride, but if all the special effects are working, it's a fun, family-style ride that still packs in some bite. When Paramount sold the parks to Cedar Fair, these were renamed to Backlot Stunt Coaster for the 2008 season. Number 14. Bavarian Beetle, an STC Cyclone Galaxy, opened in 1972, closed in 1978. Kings Island was spawned from the old Coney Island in Cincinnati, and a lot of their original rides came from the old park. The only coaster to make the move was Bavarian Beetle, spending two seasons at Coney Island before the park shut down. Standing 45 feet tall and with 800 feet of track, this portable coaster was pretty basic with its two-car trains, small dips, drawn-out turns, and helices. Basically, the same type of galaxy you'll find at small parks and most fairs. This looks like it was around the spot where King Cobra later stood, but I'm not sure if that's exactly right. Number 13. Flight of Fear, a premier rides launch coaster, opened in 1996. This Paramount coaster was themed to the Outer Limits, a science fiction TV show that had its original run in the 1960s, but was rebooted in 1995, right before this ride opened. This was the first coaster to use linear induction motors, or LIMs, and it was one of the first full circuit launch coasters. This blasts its riders up to 54 miles per hour, then goes through a very compact indoor layout with four inversions. This used to have over the shoulder restraints, but in 2001, those were replaced with the current lap bars. This was also the year it dropped the Outer Limits theme and just became Flight of Fear. It's a very intense ride, but if I had a choice, I would go with the outdoor version you can find at Six Flags America and Fiesta Texas. Being able to see all those head choppers adds a lot to the ride. Number 12, Invertigo, a Vacoma Inverted Boomerang, opened in 1999. As Paramount was gearing up for Son of Beast, they threw Kings Island a filler coaster, then known as Face Off, the 1997 action movie starring Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. Riders would face each other to fit the theme, so half the train was riding forward and half backward. But being a shuttle coaster, everyone got the ride half forward and half backward anyway. Once Paramount sold the park to Cedar Fair, this was renamed to the generic name of the model, Invertigo. It lifts you up 131 feet, hits 50 miles per hour, goes through a cobra roll and a loop, and then does it all backwards, or forward, depending where you sit. This is an underrated and intense ride, definitely one of the most intense coasters in the park. Invertigo is the only coaster of its kind operating in America today. Number 11. Demon, an aero shuttle loop, opened in 1977, closed in 1987. This was closed the year I was born, so I never got to ride it, but I've ridden its clone and it's a very forceful ride. This was among the first launch coasters ever built, sending riders off a 56-foot platform using an electric winch, going through a loop, up into another platform, where another electric winch sends you backwards through the course and back to the station. Launched and looping coasters were all brand new at the time, so this simple coaster was groundbreaking. This opened as Screamin' Demon before shortening it to Demon, standing on the plot of land where Invertigo, Amazon Falls, and the Action Zone are now, and it's the only Kings Island coaster to ever be relocated to another park. This lived on at Camden Park as Thunderbolt Express, operating for another 12 seasons from 1988 to 1999. Number 10. Vortex, an aero looper, opened in 1987, closed in 2019. This was the first coaster to feature six inversions, and it was a monster when it opened 35 years ago. 148 feet tall, 55 miles per hour, 3,800 feet of track, a double loop, a double corkscrew, and a batwing. Over time, this lost popularity. It became outdated and kept getting rougher, and by 2019, the park decided to pull the plug. I enjoyed it. It had a fantastic first drop in the back row, 
And even though it beats you up really good, I like the unique layout and the beautiful setting. This plot of land remains empty to this day, and it'll probably be the next one to be filled in when Kings Island gets their next big coaster. Number 9. Racer, a PTC wooden coaster, opened in 1972. When Kings Island opened, this was the main attraction. It was the Eiffel Tower and the Racer, an 88 foot tall, 53 mile per hour, 3,415 foot long dual track wooden coaster. This is given credit for sparking a new coaster revolution and was so popular that other parks started copying the model. King's Dominion, Carowinds, Magic Mountain, among others throughout the 70s. King's Island turned one of the trains around to run backwards in 1982 and what was supposed to be a temporary gimmick turned into a permanent fixture, lasting all the way through 2007. The park has kept this running well over its 50 years as they take pride in their history and this historic coaster. Number 8. The Bat an aero suspended coaster, opened in 1993. The first coaster to open under Paramount's reign was Top Gun, themed the 1986 film starring Tom Cruise as a Navy fighter pilot. With riders under the track and swooping around, the train swinging out 90 degrees, it did a good job simulating a fighter jet. Standing 78 feet tall and starting with a straight drop, hitting 51 miles per hour, covering 2,352 feet of track. It's a short ride, but it's a furious one. My current favorite aero suspended coaster, when Paramount sold the park, it changed to a more generic name, but with the same theme, Flight Deck. For the 2014 season, the gray track was painted orange and it was renamed to the Bat, paying homage to the park's original suspended coaster, but we'll get to that one later. Number 7. Firehawk, a Vacoma Flying Dutchman, opened in 2007, closed in 2018. Cedar Fair's first contribution to Kings Island was Firehawk, relocated from Geauga Lake where it operated as X-Flight from 2001 to 2006. Of all the Flying Dutchman out there, this one has always been my favorite, in its original form and at Kings Island. This was plopped into an open lot right next to Flight of Fear, standing 115 feet tall, hitting 50 miles per hour, covering 3,339 feet of track, including five inversions. My favorite had to be the vertical loop, a very bizarre sensation when you're laying on your back. I love the elements, I love the sensation of flying, and I've missed this coaster ever since it was taken out after 2018. Number 6. The Bat, an aero suspended coaster, opened in 1981, closed in 1983. If you rode the original Bat, you are very lucky. It seemed to have been closed more than it was open in a short three year lifespan. But the reason for its closure is what makes it such a legend, and one of the defunct coasters I would have loved to ride the most. Standing 100 feet, covering 2,456 feet of track, and despite it having a top speed of only 34 miles per hour, it ran too fast for its layout. The turns were not banked, so the car swung out way too far and the whole time the ride was tearing itself apart. It got to be too much to handle and the park pulled the plug. Arrow had to admit the mistakes in their design, go back to the drawing board, and come back with a much better design. Kings Island even gave them another shot in 1993 with their current bat. This was replaced by another Arrow, Vortex, four years after it closed. Number five, The Beast, a wooden coaster, opened in 1979. The park built this whole project in-house, led by their own Charles Din, and what a project this was. 43 years later, and no wooden coaster has topped its length, an astounding 7,361 feet. It stands 110 feet tall, but dives into a tunnel at 141 feet, topping out at 64.8 miles per hour. It's a crazy ride to this day, but in 1979, it was completely unheard of. It takes place out in the woods, and supposedly has the best night ride out there. I wouldn't know, I've never been there at night when it's open, but this long ride ends with a 540 degree helix in a tunnel following a long shallow drop and it just seems to explode into it. It may not be the best ride experience, but it doesn't get more legendary and iconic than this. Number 4. Banshee, a B&M invert, opened in 2014. When Son of Beast was finally torn down, the park got to work on its replacement, the world's longest inverted coaster, Banshee. Just like with the mine train, Kings Island got their invert weirdly late. Most major parks got B&M inverts in the 90s, and Kings Island got Banshee 8 years after the last one opened in the US. That's not a bad thing. They got a state-of-the-art invert. 167 feet tall, 68 miles per hour, 7 inversions, and despite those huge inversions, its speed makes it very intense. Just to mix it up at the end, it has one slow hang time roll before winding back to the brakes. To me, this is a top 3 invert in the country, and a must ride at Kings Island. Number 3. Orion a B&M Giga, opened in 2020. Of all the top tier Cedar Fair parks, Kings Island was the one left without a Giga. That is, until 2020. And yes, this is a Giga. The drop is 300 feet. The height itself doesn't matter. Come on, people. 
It stands 287 feet tall, but it drops into a ravine to bring it up to 300. It tops out at 91 miles per hour and has a little more than a mile of track. It's in no way a perfect coaster. It could be longer, but I don't care. It's a lot of fun. They started working on this right after Firehawk was torn down, and that plot of land was used for the station, but the rest of it stretches behind Racer and comes back, mixing in big drops, airtime, and intensity. Number 2. Mystic Timbers, a GCI wooden coaster, opened in 2017. Over in Rivertown, GCI, Skyline, and Kings Island work together to build an absolute masterpiece. GCI wooden coasters are usually part of the supporting cast, but Mystic Timbers was built to be the star of the park. 109 feet tall, down a twisting drop, hitting 53 miles per hour, 3,265 feet of track in an out and back layout. It's an out of control speed machine, twisting over itself and tossing you out of your seat the whole time. It's not the longest ride, but it feels complete. And as of 2022, it's still glossy smooth. It's the best GCI in the country and possibly the world. Number one, Diamondback, a B&M Hyper, opened in 2009. Some people may tell you, a B&M Hyper is a B&M Hyper. You ride one, you rode them all. That's just not true, and Diamondback proves that better than anyone. Ride Diamondback in the back row and feel the long, sustained moments of airtime all over the first half of the ride. In the second half, it continues to throw you out of your seat, twists around, and ends with an epic splashdown. Also located in Rivertown, this makes for an elite one-two punch with Mystic Timbers. It stands 230 feet in the air, hits 80 miles per hour, covers 5,282 feet of track, and I can't get enough of this. If you're an airtime junkie like me, it doesn't get much better than this. And Diamondback just hits different than the others. That's why it's in my overall top 10. That's a wrap on every coaster that ever operated at Kings Island. Let me know where you agree or disagree, and what you would have changed around. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like, and give me a sub if you're new here and love coasters. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright free off-ride footage, and my baseball channel if you love baseball content also. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.